Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making one of my favorite tools for working in the forge and managing the fire and that's what I call the forge ladle. This is the ladle that I'm going to be replacing. It's just a standard wok ladle made out of heavy gauge sheet metal. I bought it years ago when I started forging just because I liked the look of it and one day it made its way out into the shop and I've been using it ever since. So here's the updated version of my old ladle. It's still a wok ladle, but at least now it looks like it belongs in the shop. I started using a ladle years ago when I started forging because I really didn't have any choice. That's all I had, but I wouldn't be without it today. It's great for managing the fire, or digging coal out of the bin, and of course it's a ladle, so you can't beat it for hauling water and pouring it exactly where you need it. I'm really surprised that more people don't use them. I'm making the bowl of the ladle from a 7 inch diameter piece of 14 gauge sheet metal. Before chiseling out the circle I saw in four relief cuts around the diameter. And then I just use a narrow cold chisel to cut a shallow groove along the scribe line. I'm not trying to cut all the way through, I just want to drive the chisel into about half the thickness of the sheet metal. and then I go over to the vise and flex the piece back and forth until the scrap breaks away. To shape the bowl I'm going to use a process called sinking. Sinking is by far the simplest and most direct way of turning a flat piece of steel into a bowl shape. All you need to do is support the sheet metal over some type of hollow form and then use a hammer to stretch the metal into that form. I'm going to be using a heavy chain link that's held in the vise as a form. To stretch the sheet metal, I'm going to be hammering the unsupported section of the metal with a round-faced hammer. And then by systematically moving the metal around, I'll create the bowl shape. I start the process by just hammering the sheet metal cold over the chain link. All I'm trying to do here is create a very shallow dish. Once I have a shallow dish shape that's fairly uniform, I'll take the piece over to the forge and I'll start heating and hammering one section at a time while it's hot. Forging the metal hot allows me to dramatically change the shape of the bowl without creating any distortion or bringing the bowl out of round. And then when I have the shape I want, I'll just take a very light hammer and go over the entire piece very systematically to clean up any irregularities in the shape. The handle is made from two pieces of 3 8 square bar. I use an 8 inch length to make the ring portion of the handle. Before shaping the bar into a ring, I need to forge a square corner on each end of the bar. 
These right angled bends will provide the material that I need for the two scarf joints that I'm going to use to attach both sections of the handle. The first scarf joint is going to allow me to weld the ring into a seamless circle and the second scarf joint is going to allow me to attach the ring to the handle. In the first welding heat, I'm mostly concerned with sealing all the scarf joints. I did miss one of the scarf joints because I didn't forge the edge of the scarf thin enough. So I wasn't able to make that weld line disappear without forging the metal too thin. And you will see that line in the finished piece. I'll take another welding heat before forging the ring to the handle just to further refine the shape and make the scarf joint that's going to allow me to join the ring to the handle. I'm going to use a cleft weld to attach the handle to the ring. The cleft weld is made by first splitting the bar and then welding each side of that split around the scarf of the other piece. The advantage of the cleft weld is that all of the welding is being done on the scarf joint of the heavier piece. So there isn't any need to upset the smaller section of bar to create the scarf joint as you would with a normal lap joint and the split in the bar just automatically forms a nice transition between the two pieces. The disadvantage with the cleft weld is that it can be a little tricky keeping the pieces together in the fire. So you want to make sure that your fire is well prepared ahead of time and you lay the pieces very gently inside the fire and rake the coals over top of it and then don't disturb the piece until it reaches a welding heat and the natural tack that happens at that point will keep the pieces together till you get them to the anvil. And when you're at welding heat, you reverse the process. You carefully scrape the coals away from the piece and then lift it out and bring it over to the anvil so you can seal the scarf joints. And then now that the handle is together, I'll take a number of welding heats to further refine the weld on both the ring and the handle. The last thing that needs to be done to the handle is to forge the strap that's going to support the bowl of the ladle. I start by forging an offset about 3 eighths of an inch at the end of the bar. This will give me the material that I need to form the round section at the very tip of the strap. Behind this offset I'm going to thin the bar down to its final thickness. I have to make sure that I don't forge this section back too far because I need to leave another offset at the top of the strap just before it transitions into the main part of the handle. So as I'm forging I'm always referring back to the bowl to make sure that I have the proper length. And then I'll forge the second offset and make the transition from the top of the strap to the handle.
The final shaping on the handle is done by cross peening the offsets into two round sections that I'm going to use to rivet the handle to the bowl. When I cross peen this second offset, I want to make sure that I leave the center of this offset at the same level as the rest of the strap. The only area that I'm thinning down are the two round sections on either side of the strap. If I thin down the center section too much, it'll weaken the handle and cause it to break just above the rivets. As you can see, all the shaping is done in the fire, and I'm just going to use a file to clean up any irregularities in the forging and to make sure that there aren't any rough edges. I usually start by riveting the very tip of the strap to the bowl. Once again, I'm just using common nails as rivets. Next I take a heat so I can shape the strap around the bowl. Because the bowl was raised out of the fire, it stayed relatively cold, so I'm able to use it to shape the strap exactly around the shape of the bowl. I will need a second heat to refine the outside edges of the second offset to make sure that they lay flat up against the bowl. After riveting the top of the strap to the bowl, I'll shape the transition between the bowl and the main part of the handle, and then I'll just go over everything, making sure that the strap is sitting tight up against the bowl and that all the rivets are tight. <laughs> 